It's the 100 subscriber giveaway right here on My Vaping Place. Hey, everybody. Nice of you to join me today. Thanks for coming. Okay, here we are. This is the one that you and everybody else has been waiting for. This is the drawing for the Limo 2, which is the prize in the 100 subscriber giveaway here on um, my vaping place. I'm going to tell you right now, if I sound a little bit crazy, a little bit hyper right now, it's because I just got off of work about an hour and a half, two hours ago. And I have been going absolutely banana jabbers trying to get this thing set up. I tried to get OBS, which is what I, the uh, recording suite, which I'm using here to record the actual drawing of the name. And unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how the heck to do it. So I had to go into XSplit, which has got the capability of recording ooh, excuse me, a website make the drawing there, record it, and now I'm going to bring it over here and show you the actual drawing that I did. All right? So it's not going to be live right here, right now, but it was done live, and it was done in random.org. All right, so if you give me a second here, let me bring this up. All right, here we go. This is random.org, as you can see. And there's 19 names in here, 19 people entered in. Now I'm coming down and I'm going to hit the randomizer and the big winner is Julie LeBlanc. Julie, you are the winner of the Limo 2 for the 100 subscriber giveaway. Okay, in a minute or two, I'm going to be going down to the build deck and I'm going to show you uh, me actually building the coil that is going to come out to see come out pre-installed and pre-built into the um, into the oh boy I am so tired I'm so wired right now it's not even funny and I haven't even had that much coffee today believe me um, in a few minutes I am going to go down to the build deck and I'm going to show you me actually putting a coil into this thing, wicking it and setting it up. It's not going to be juiced. I'm not going to send it to you with the juice, with the, the wick juiced. So you're going to have to watch this video and see how I open it up and then go in and juice it as soon as you get it. But the wick and the coil will be in there. Now, this is a sub-ohm tank, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this coil for 0.5 ohms, and I'm going to wick it and set it up for you, so that way all you have to do is juice the wicking, juice the tank, and you'll be up and running, okay? So, give me a minute or two to get myself set up here. Um, I'm using a new... Um, build deck stand for my camera so if it looks a little bit different than what you're used to seeing please understand this is a work in progress um, the next time that you see this it's probably going to be even more different because I'm trying to refine my technique here a little bit to not only streamline it and make it easier for me to record these videos but also to make the videos better for you guys out there. So bear with me. Uh, we're going to go head down to the build deck now. And uh, I'll there that, that, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Rented lips and these ants are all over the place here. Oh, I got to get some ant traps. Uh, these things are driving me nuts. They've been crawling all over me all night here since I got back in. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am wired tonight, and I didn't even have that much coffee. All right, let's head down below decks, and I'll show you how we're going to build this thing, all right? Meet you down there below. Okay, here we are down on the build deck, and here is your prize, Julie. 
Um, like I said, I'm still working on the lighting here, so and on the camera angle, so things are going to get a little bit crazy here. As you can see, the color shift from is 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 like absolutely crazy. But so please bear with me, okay? Um, this is the way it's going to come to you. Um, Eleafworld.com, the SKU number. As you can see here on the back, the scratch and check was, oh boy, focus is way out. I did do the scratch and check, so when I bought it, to, just to make sure that it was an actual real uh, Limo 2, and it checked out fine on the, uh, on the, on the, um, <clears throat> on the E-Leaf website. So, there you go, E-Leaf. Limo2, eleafworld.com. So let's take her out of the package and see what we've got. All right. There's your tank. It will be coming to you. Yes, that's some of my writing on there. It'll be coming to you with spare parts, o rings, a uh, couple of. Uh, sc extra screws uh, that is 28 gauge stainless steel 316 L I included some in there extra for you uh, it has a coil in here this is a Canthal A1 coil uh, this is one that was in here originally you get a little blue screwdriver this is Japanese organic cotton uh, you get the manual in here and you get uh, the warning about making sure that you um, that you uh, pre-soak the cotton before you start vaping on it. Okay, so that's all the stuff that's going to come in there. It's exactly the same stuff that came in here. Well, not exactly the same stuff, but it's as close as I can get it, since I don't have 28 gauge Canthal here right now to do it. So, all right, let me move that out of the way. And we're going to move in my little build stand. And we're going to take this apart. This has a wide bore 510 drip tip on here. Uh, it is a side top fill. You chain, move this like so to fill it. And you move this like so to close it. Um, I suggest uh, that when you do fill this, you close the airflow for the airflow uh, down here first, and then you open this up and do your filling, and then close it up, and then open your airflow. Okay, otherwise you're liable to flood the tank. All right. Um, top section here comes out uh, this is a little bit grabby this isn't the way it came from there but I had to use a pair of pliers one time to take it out so it's it it got a little bit deformed but it still works fine um, threading on here is very nice um, all except for this threading and actually this works pretty well here um, it catches onto this, so when you want to take off the build deck, uh, it actually sticks to the top chimney, so it works works out really well. This is your tank glass here, and this is your build deck. And I'm going to stick this in here like so. Now, there's two ways you can uh, coil this build deck. One is using the little screws here and doing the wrap on them. Or, ooh, sorry about that. Um, don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Hang on a second. Let me, let me adjust the focus here a little bit so you can see better. There we go. Okay. As you can see, there's two little holes here, one here and one here. These two holes go all the way through 
both the positive and the negative, uh, the positive and negative blocks. This, by the way, is peak insulator in here. Um, the Cantal one that I had, the Cantal coil I had in here uh, for the longest time went through this hole and stayed in there. Um, <clears throat> it works good, but it's a pain in the butt to build. The easiest way to do it is to just wrap it around the screws here, the screw terminals, which is what I'm going to be doing here today. Um, it works a whole heck of a lot better. I keep hitting this mic, and this thing keeps, the, the springs on here keep jangling. I am sorry about the audio here tonight. Okay, um, so, yes, next thing, coil. This is 316L stainless steel. Uh, it is 0.28, as you can see here. This is the stainless steel that I'm using, 28 gauge, 316L. Um, it is five wraps, no, sorry, six wraps around a 2.5 millimeter inside diameter okay uh, now I have to bring the focus back down so you can see what I'm doing here and as you can see I'm moving around here because I have to adjust the focus and stuff like that so as you can see this is a work in progress and it is dr going to drive both you and me Absolutely banana jabbers until I can get it set up correctly the way I want it to. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the coil in first. Uh, standard small Phillips screwdriver right in here. Bring the screws out a little bit. All right. Now, if you don't know how to coil one of these things, um, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of videos out there that will show you just how to go about doing it. Um, I might actually be, I, I want to put one up. I'm thinking about putting one up in the next couple of weeks on showing you how to use it. So, um, yeah, this is the, this is a, a clone of the Kuro Concepts coiler. As you can see, it's. 2.5 millimeter uh, diameter rod which gives you a 2.5 millimeter inside diameter and we're going to put this on here like so so that way it doesn't turn around and get totally deformed while we're trying to put this thing in okay so we're going to put this around here like so and we're going to hold the coil in place and we're just going to do a couple of little S bends here and let me get my nippers because these legs are a little bit long as they usually are. Ah, uh, come on. Minga. Can't even get a break at 2.30 in the morning. All right, so. Never coil at 2.30 in the morning after you just worked a full shift and your dog butt tired. Because things are not going to work exactly right. Okay, as you see what I did there? I took the wire and I wrapped it around the screw. This is something that I've always done. It goes back to my days when I was working doing a lot of soldering and stuff like that. Um, the, I, I learned how to solder to mil spec. So everything gets wrapped. Everything gets uh, made sure that the, it will never move even after it's soldered down in place the whole nine yards. Okay, so we wrap that around there like so. And we tighten this into place here. And now we're going to tug and straighten and lift. 
Oh, that's not going to lift right. That's making contact. That's going to wind up shorting. That's not going to be good. There we go. Lift that leg up a little bit. And move that over. And yeah, that should be good. And lift that up some off of the airflow. And move that over. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me get the focus here again. Uh, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. There we go. See how I lifted the leg here up a little bit so that way the negative terminal would not be coming in contact with the positive terminal here. So, and yeah, that looks good. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much centered right over the airflow inlet. Yeah, that looks pretty good, don't you think? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. All right, so let's put this onto a mod. Don't these ants sleep? Jeez. Five, Five. 20 watts to bed this thing in. I am expecting in within the next couple of days a... 521 tab from um, from Coilmaster and this will make life so much easier now this is showing at 0.7 ohms which is a little bit higher than what I came out with um, I put it onto my meter my digital volt meter digital volt ohm meter before and it came showed me as being a 0.5 so I guess we're gonna to have to bed this thing in here and see what happens so let's burn yeah look at that that thing is not a happy camper let's see there we go Yeah, that's working pretty nice. And because this is stainless steel, it's now showing 0.9 ohms. Let's blow on that a little bit. Now it's down to 0.7 ohms. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be a 0.7 ohm coil. Okay. Snafu. What do you expect? That's what happens when you're coiling at 2 o'clock. Oh, God, it's now 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. This, I think this is probably the, the earliest in the morning that I've ever coiled. Okay, now I'm just pulling... I'm pulling off the outer hard stuff off of this cotton. This is just Muji. Um, I had this... I got a deal on eBay on some Muji. Uh, $14 to 250 yeah, 250 pad packs, 14 bucks, direct from Japan. Uh, yeah, I went for it. Um, that'll be enough to keep me going for at least two years. Yeah. Ant body all over the place. Oh, lovely. All right, so let's take it off this mod before I accidentally fire this thing with the coil cotton in here and wind up toasting it. All right. All right, what we're going to do is, is we're going to take the... Let me just readjust the focus on this. 
Yeah, sorry about that. I just remembered that I had to readjust the focus. And... Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is, with this coil, it's going to come through here, and it's going to drape down right here to the deck. Ooh, excuse me. And then it's going to be right here in front of these two juice channels that you see coming up here. It's not going to block these juice channels. It's just going to come and lay here, kind of sort of like a K-Fun build. So it's just going to sit here. The juice is going to come up into here. And this is going to be right in here. And it's just going to just going to lay here a little bit. So that way it pulls the juice in as it comes in. Okay? Make sense? Good. I'm glad. I don't know if I'm making sense anymore tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is going to be a good one. Remember, Julie, I'm just doing this that way. You can get it up and running. If you don't like this build, you don't have to vape it. You can always change it. That's the reason why I'm showing you how I'm doing it on the camera here. So that way you can see how to change it yourself if you so desire. All right, so, oh, God, come on. Give me a bloody break here. There we go. Mm. Yeah. Don't worry. That's not going to be in there. That's just to get it started. Now, way I wick coils is that it is tight inside there. The reason why I do it like this is because a lot of people have what they call angry coils. Now, an angry coil <coughs> is a coil that is not got its cotton in full contact with the coil when you're firing it. The juice is coming up through the wicks, like so. It's getting to here. The coil fires. The coil, being metal, gets hot. It expands. This here is nice and easy going through there. This cotton isn't going to expand the way same way. So what happens is, is it wicks the juice up, and then you get this layer of liquid, this, this boundary layer of liquid between the wick and the coil. And that's where you start getting your pops, your sizzles, your hisses, and all that good stuff. Okay? Um, the way I do my... The way I do my wicking is, is that when I pull this through, I have to feel tension on there, and I actually have to see that coil starting to move. You see how that coil's moving? That means that that wick is tight in there. So when this coil starts to get hot and it expands, this cotton is going to expand ever so slightly, staying in full contact with this coil. You will not have sizzles, crackles, pops, and magma hot e-juice going into your mouth and down your throat. Not going to happen. At least it shouldn't. <laughs> the way I'm doing things tonight, I'm not going to give you any guarantees on it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take your scissor. Now, what you do with this thing is, is you put it right here next to the channel of the build deck right there and when you do that you bring the cotton over and snip gone and snippers gone yeah, I start getting a little bit wacky at this hour of the morning. Now, if you look very carefully here, you'll see there's a white line in here, and there's a white line here. 
that's where the cotton fibers have gotten compressed by the act of cutting it. So what we do is, what I, what I always do is, is I tease that white line out, okay? Because that white line will not wick properly. You want this thing to look kind of sort of fluffy like that, okay? And then we come over to the other side here, and we tease this out. And you want it to look nice and fluffy, kind of sort of like that, okay? You want it to look like so. Like two cones with their the head of the cone meeting right smack in the middle of the coil here. That's how you want this, this wicking to look like. All right. Now, take the concentrator here off. And we're going to take this and we're going to put it in here like so and we're going to put it down onto like so these this is one of the best investments i ever made it's just a standard dental pick cost me like three something out of china and it works great i use this piece here a lot especially on my k funds and I'll show you how why I use it a lot. We're going to take this and we're just going to press this down nice and gently into place. Right into place here. Come on. Of course it's not going to play nice because it's on camera. Yeah. Now you can use a ordinary screwdriver to do this as well. Let me Let me dig one of them out. Push that down into place there. Now, by the time this ships out to you, Julie, um, and you get it, you may have to push this wicking down. I don't know. Um, it may get jostled and bounced around enough in the U.S. Postal Service system to make this wicking pop out of here for you. So just remember how I'm doing this. Okay. And tease that into place like so. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. All right. Let me, let me whack the focus back up here so you can get a really close look at exactly what I'm talking about. And try and get the focus there. Yep, see that? That's what you want your wicking to look like. Now, like I said, because I am not, I'm not going to juice this up because I don't want to put anything on here to not only get all over the place in transit, but also, I don't know what flavor of juice you're going to be using. I could use some straight VG in here, but it's going to taste a little weird when you first start doing it. So make sure you open this thing up and put some VG, put some juice or even some straight VG if you want right onto that wicking before you start trying to vape this thing. I know you're a smart girl. You've been around for a while and you know your stuff. But I'm still going to remind you because there are other people out there who are listening to this who don't know. So, I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound bossy. Okay? So, we're going to put this in here. Put the glass on. Put the top portion on here. And try and get this into place here properly. Now, that is a non-adjustable 510 pin. It does not float. It sticks out. So, yeah, you could use this on, you could use this on a mech mod if you really want to. So, oh, come on. You, oh, you're going to do that to me, right? 
Son of a... Okay. All right, let's do this again. There we go. And make sure this is down into place like so. You want to push this back a little bit away from the juice channels um, just to make sure that you got a nice clear juice channel there. All right. Glass into place. Chimney into place. Nice and tight. And that's, of course, a little bit too tight. And actually, no, it's not. There we go. Nemo 2. Airflow closed. Airflow open. There you go. Put the chuff cap on there. Uh, and the whiteboard cap. All right. So there you go. Good to go. I will be getting this out to you in the next couple of days. And as soon as I get it, I will email you with the tracking number so you can keep an eye on this so you know exactly when it's going to arrive. Okay? All right, let, let's head back topside so we can talk a little bit more and uh, let you get the heck out of here and I can go and get some sleep. All right, talk to you in a few. Okay, here we are again topside. Um, I apologize if the audio level was a little on the low side while I was doing the build deck sequence. Uh, let me just get this thing right. I tried to get the mic over in the area and hopefully I got some, some decent audio. Um, here is the Limo, uh, freshly coiled as you saw just a minute or two ago. I am going to now put some scotch tape on here to hold it into place so that way it doesn't come flying apart. Just a couple of little pieces of scotch tape, nothing major. Uh, should just be able to pop them right off. Yeah, two pieces. I think that should do it. Okay, so there it goes. Um, I'll send you an email, Julie. Uh, you can give me your address, and uh, you'll be able to, and <clears throat> excuse me, and I will get this off to you probably first thing Monday morning. Okay, uh, so that's about it. Uh, I am not doing a. I'm not doing one of my um, broadcasts this morning because I. Uh, it's now 3:22 in the morning, and I am totally beat, and I am going to crash and burn and be trying to cut the petrified forest up with a chainsaw. So it's going to be pretty noisy around this place, and I'm willing to bet that the wife is going to probably wind up wanting to sleep out here in the living room. So, um, oops. So, all right, let me get out of here. Let you guys get back to what you're doing. And, uh, to all of you out there who didn't win, I'm really sorry, but the odds were pretty good. That you could win because it was you had a one in nineteen shot, and well, this is this is what happened. So, um, I'm sorry. I will try to schedule to do some more giveaways and stuff like that uh, in the future. But most of the stuff that I get in, um, is stuff that I turn around and I buy. Like the 200 i stick, I bought that. The K funds, I bought that. Um, the only thing I didn't buy was well, no, I bought the the 120 mil bottle of of juice. Um, the only thing I didn't buy was the 330 mils. And oops, I 
kind of vaped through them. That's why I had to get the 120 mil so I could not only enjoy it, but also have some juice to be able to do the review with. Oh, oh God, sorry. I, like I said, I am really beat. Uh, but I wanted to get this thing up in the morning, so that way for first thing in the morning, so everybody um, will know exactly what's going on. And Julie, congratulations for all the rest of you. I will be trying to get up some some giveaways. I'll see what I've got around here that I can actually scrounge up um, for some other giveaways in the coming in the future I'm gonna have to try and figure out how to see if I can figure out how to get um, random.org to work with OBS if anybody out there who sees this knows how to do that could you drop me a little line at uh, my vaping place at gmail.com which is the station's normal um, the station's normal email address. Um, just just drop me a line uh, at that that email address and um, just kind of cue me in because I'm absolutely clueless. And also, it's taking into account, like I said, it's three almost three thirty in the morning, and I'm beat. So, good night. Ooh, sorry. Uh, yeah, that one. That one did not want to stay in. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to say good night. I am going to go crash. I am going to go burn, and I am going to be out cold. It's probably before my head hits the pillow. So, thank you all for joining me tonight. Thank you all of you. Uh, my new subscribers, my old subscribers, the folks that have been there from day one. Um, I, I really, I really, I really appreciate all of your support. I really appreciate all of the best wishes that you've been giving me all along. Your comments are insightful. Um, I, I, I really love it. Um, and, and the fact that my channel is not as big as some of the other guys' channels, um, I can actually sit there and I can actually reply the way I want to reply to the questions or comments that are being made in the comment section. Um, if I had 3,000, 5,000 emails in my inbox every day, like some guys have, I'd never be able to, I'd never be able to answer them properly. And I do want so to answer, um, Give the email, uh, give, give an in-depth answer to your emails because you took the time to write them to me, so I should at least take the time to answer you properly. Brain is freezing up. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. Thank you for joining me. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the good Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand. And may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Because they got better beer upstairs. Bye. <laughs>